James here from goodguitarist.com and in today's lesson I'm going to show you an easy acoustic version of Don't Let Me Down by the Beatles and this song is great because it's like two two chord songs you know one section is E to F sharp minor and then the other section is E to B7 but they're both really it's easy to keep track of where you are in the song and it's it's a great song for beginners I guess that's what I'm getting at and speaking of beginners if you are just getting started uh, don't forget to grab your copy of my free ebook it has all the essentials you know of chords and strumming all the fundamentals everything you need to get started and uh, it's completely free for all my subscribers so you can get your copy in the corner or down below let's just get started um, the song revolves around these two chord shapes primarily, E, and then F sharp minor, which in some cases is a bar chord. And that's great if you can play that, but that's it's not a very beginner friendly shape. So I actually have an easier way to play this chord that's quite simple. We start out by placing our first finger on the second fret of the thickest string. Then we skip a string, we put our middle finger on the second fret of the D string. We put our ring finger on the second fret of the G string. And then we put our pinky finger on the second fret of the B string. And it's a bit tricky to get all your fingers as close to the fret as possible when you're stacking them up this way. So just try your best. And by the way, this makes an A shape with those three fingers. And we're basically just adding the second fret of the thickest string to that. And we get F sharp minor. And those other two strings, it doesn't matter if they're muted or open. They sound good whether they're open or muted. That's why I really like this shape. You know, it's it's not too tricky to put together. And the chorus and verse both just use those shapes in the exact same order. So let's practice switching between them nice and slow with downstrokes only, starting off on F sharp minor. One, two, three. Four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, E, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four. One more time. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. Don't let me down. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four. And then it rings out. So I want you to be able to do it just like that, counting one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. You know, we're counting that special way because we're playing the same chord for so long that helps us keep track of how many times we play the chord for. You know, we play each one for four times four downstrokes, you know, so four measures of each chord and we're counting out four measures of each. You can always just go through that as many times as you need to, to, to get that. And now to that, simple chord progression, we can add a strumming pattern that goes like this. I'll do it slowly. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So that pattern is root, root, down, down, up. And root just means to aim for the thicker strings. It's just like a little downstroke, kind of like a little flick of the wrist. Root, root, down and then a down up. I like to count out loud, one, two, three, four, you know, nice and steady, and attach each of those to a beat. So on beat one and two, those are both roots. Beat three is a down, and beat four is a down up. I'm treating it like a single unit, you know, because once we get it up to speed, it, it kind of feels that way, you know, it's just a down, up, like one, one swift motion. And we count that out nice and slow. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So take your time with that. And if you find you're having trouble with that, I do have some other lessons 
on the mechanics of strumming, counting it out, you know, working it all out. I'll put them in the corner so you can, you know, check that out and get a bit more of a handle on your rhythm. I also have a complete beginner's course, which has that, keeps that in mind the entire way through. You know, rhythm is heavily embedded into my course because I know that that's one of the main issues holding people back or keeping them in the beginner phase for longer than they need to be. So um, check that out if you want some help, you know, going from beginner to confident strummer. I'll put a link for that as well. Anyways, we have that strumming pattern. We have those chord shapes. Now let's take a moment and put those together nice and slow, starting on F sharp minor. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four times. One, two, three, four times. And you just go back and forth, four times each, you know? So just try that as much as you need to. And now when we put the chorus together, there's a couple spots where it's a little bit different. Basically the fourth time that we play each chord shape, so the fourth measure of that shape, we're gonna do this instead. And that's during the don't let me. So it lines up exactly with what you'd be singing. And we're just going down, up, up with the counting one and two and three and four and and notice that i'm always moving my arm down and up that's essential when you're strumming it's called continuous arm motion and you should always be doing that you know it's a super good habit it turns your arm and your whole body into a metronome you know and makes you a rhythm machine so we count three and four and one and two and three and four and now I wanna insert that into the verse. And we're basically gonna play the verse now exactly like you would if you were playing along with the recording, starting out on F sharp minor. A one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Here's the fourth time. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two. We strum it once and we let it ring. The verse is the exact same concept. You know, you play four measures of F sharp minor with the same pattern and then you play the E chord with the same pattern. But there are a couple points where you just strum the E chord and let it ring out. So we have to count how much space we're leaving when we let it ring out. The first time we let it ring out, we're going to count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. So that ends up being 10 counts total, but you know, we got to keep it musical and count up to four, right? So we count up to four, two times, and then we just count up to two, four plus four plus two. And that fits in after we do two measures strumming the E chord. I'll show you how that goes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Into the F sharp minor. And this, you know, might seem a little complicated when we're taking it out of context, but I want you to just practice it like that, you know, doing the strumming pattern two times on E, then doing a downstroke as you count. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two and starting the F sharp minor chord. That way we can, get, we can get the muscle memory aspect of it out of the way. And you know, once we start putting the song together, you'll be able to see where, when, and why that happens. You know, it's to accommodate for the lyrics. There's basically a couple extra lyrics in there, so they have to add a couple extra beats. Anyways, the verse and the chorus, we already have all the components. So let's take a moment now to do that you know i'm gonna sing as 
as best as I can sing, and we're going to go through the chorus and the counting into the verse and then back into the chorus so that you can experience those, you know, strumming and counting portions of it. So we start off, don't let me down. Anyways, the only other part of this tune, we're going to go between E and then B7. And B7 is like a super popular cowboy chord. Uh, from the E chord, we can leave our middle finger down and just pivot off of it. Makes the switch a little bit easier. And we play four measures of E, eight measures of B7, and then four measures of E. So let's just start with our strumming pattern right away since it's easy enough to do that. And we're going to count out the number of times that we play the pattern. It's one time per measure. So four measures of E is four strumming patterns of E. One, two, three, four. So try that as many times as you need to. And then when you're ready, we're going to put together all those parts and play through them in a row. And I want to play the chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, because that's the same order that you'd find it within the song. And if you can do that, you just have to add uh, another verse and another chorus at the end of it. And that's the whole song. So let's try that together nice and slow.
So, you know, that's the whole tune. If you would like a full playthrough through the entire song with a backing track, once again, that's available on my Patreon page. If you need any extra help, don't forget there's my free ebook. I have one for rhythm and one for lead guitar. They're both completely free for all my subscribers. I'll put a link down below for that. Um, I also have my complete beginners course. If you're interested, that's the best way to help support the channel is to check that out. And, um, Leave a comment if you have any questions for me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Otherwise, have a fun time practicing, and I'll see you soon.